Mr. President. Senator from West if, Virginia. If I may respond and to my dear friend uh, from Rhode Island, who have, I have the utmost respect for, we just have a respectful difference as far as how to approach this problem, and we're working through it. We really, truly are working, and we will work through it. Uh, we had a charge a year ago to fix it. So we started working on that. The president, in timely fashion, gave us a piece of legislation that had a longer term fix, 10 years. We took that and worked off of that original proposal given to us by the administration and by the president, and we start working in a bipartisan manner to make this work. And with that being said, we looked at the 3.4%, and I will say, Mr. President, that a majority of our Senate colleagues, both Democrats and Republicans, did not understand that the 3.4% only affected those that were subsidized loans. Those, that's the smallest amount of loans we have out there. I think the majority of our colleagues and the majority of the people, the majority of the press, thought that we fixed the 3.4% for everybody that had a student loan. That wasn't the case. So we wanted to go back and make sure if we do something, we do it for everybody. Because the person who has income limits and qualified for the subsidized loan, the first year they get that loan is $2,500. The second year is $3,500. Third year is 45, and the fifth year is 55. That's the maximum they can borrow. They can't get through school on that. So you know what? They borrow the non-subsidized. Guess what they've been paying for the non-subsidized? The 6.8. Guess what students that have the, what we call the plus loans? They've been paying 7.9, but we're not hearing anything about that. Put it in perspective as dollars. If we have one year extension, as my dear colleagues have suggested to try to fix the problem again, that'll be about a $2 billion savings of interest payments that would be put on the backs of students. That's a tremendous amount of money. Guess what happens if the proposal, the bipartisan, the only bipartisan proposal, if we pass our bipartisan proposal, it saves $8.8 .8 billion and everybody participates. Even the subsidized loan the student that struggled the hardest, that needs most of the help, they get most of the help, not only on their subsidized, but they get it on their unsubsidized. We've looked at everything possible. So we have a piece of legislation which we think not only fixes, but basically repairs a broken system. You know, you look at where we are today, and we looked at sequestering, and we look at on and on and on. I've been here for not quite three years, Mr. President. And I've watched us kick the can down the street to where my toe is hurting. My toe is hurting. We've kicked this can so much. And it's starting to kick back. We need to start giving the people of this great country the confidence that we can work as a functional body, as respectful as possible between Democrats, Republicans, and independents, coming together, putting our country first, putting our students first, not playing politics. And let me tell you what we agreed on. We agreed that Democrat and Republican in this bipartisan bill, that not one dollar should go to debt reduction. We don't believe that the students trying to get an education to better their quality of life, to improve their quality of life, their economic condition, and the economic condition of our great country should have to be burdened with the debt and reducing the debt of this nation. We can do that by them being productive citizens. We agreed on that. That's something that wasn't agreed on before because there were people talking about they wanted surpluses to go to debt reduction. We've taken surpluses out and reduced the rate as low as humanly possible. It's been scored. It's been scored. We're bringing rates down. If you look at the top rate at 7.9%, that's going to come to 6.21 if you have a plus loan. If you have a loan, which is a uh, graduate Stafford loan, that's going to come from a 6.8 to 5.21. And if you look at all the undergraduates, before, before uh, if it's a uh, subsidized loan and a non-subsidized undergraduate, they all go to 3.6. That's a tremendous savings. That's the $8.8 .8 .8 billion. That's what we're asking for. So I respectfully, and I mean that respectfully, disagree with my colleagues that have signed on to a one-year extension believing that we're going to be able to come up with an agreement or a compromise 
that is better than what we have before us because we've worked this out with Senator Carper. Senator Carper from Delaware. Senator King from Maine. Myself from West Virginia. Senator Alexander from Tennessee. Those are four former governors. We know we had to work together because we had to make things happen immediately. At the end of the year, everything had to balance out. And then we had Senator Burr and we had Senator Coburn who have been here and understand the finances as well as any people in this body. So I respectfully ask that uh, we, as we go away, and I want the students and I want all the people that have loans right now not to worry. July 1st will come. We'll come back here probably by, I think, the 10th, 9th or 10th of July. It'll be first order of business that we both asked for. Both of our bills will be on first order of business. And I assure you, we will come up with a compromise agreement that we can work out that'll give the relief that the students, those who are designing an education, those who want to better their lives, will have that opportunity and be able to have some stability and not have the increased rates passed on because we'll make this retroactive. So with that, I would yield the floor.